Hello, Michelle. Thank you for allowing me to interview you today. That's a pleasure. Um, my first question is, um, can you explain to outsiders of the society mm -hmm. what the society actually does? Um, well, what we do is we, uh, in short, we screen uh, films every Wednesday in, from throughout the South East Asian uh, region. We do that in the Ellen Terry building at, um, at two o'clock. Um, and the purpose of that is to kind of broaden people's engagement, people's awareness with um, East Asian film in, in general and give them a kind of window to that culture, as it were. That's in short what, uh, um, what we do, but we combine that with um, a series of events that we do where we'll invite people from both academia and from um, the industry itself to come along and give talks about how they uh, got involved and their interest and passion in East Asian film in general. What made you set up the society? Um, I think in short, what made me set it up was um, I just felt that students should be given an opportunity um, to, to not in a patronising way broaden their horizons, but to get involved in a, in a live project that they get particular outcomes from. So whilst it may sound like it's just watching some films, putting a DVD on and, and uh, uh, students coming along and watching it, the actual organisation infrastructure of the society, it's always been uh, my intention that, that is completely run by uh, the students and they get some experience of dealing with external partners um, and promoting uh, the society and the, and the uh, events themselves and um, you know offering it because the, the department doesn't to my knowledge have any other specific societies that run and so uh, um, this one reflects the international nature of the student body that we have in the department as well um, and is a bit of fun. I think that that's the, the, the key to it as well is it's film I think is a wonderful uh, uh, medium for, for everybody to get involved in, to enjoy. You don't need to have any particular skills or, or previous knowledge to these films. You can come along and just watch them and engage with them and enjoy them or not enjoy them. Um, but that, you know, in itself, uh, um, is 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 a, a really important function, I think, in 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 raising awareness within the department. Why, in particular, East Asian cinema? Um, I think that that certainly comes from where my, I suppose, where my interests lie, which is in East Asian cinema, to be honest. Um, but I certainly think that it's arguably one of the most relevant cinemas that people I'm sure people would a lot of people would disagree with that um, but with the rise certainly if we think of if we use China as a case study for that and it's you know vast, very rapidly becoming an e one of the major economic powers in the world um, that I think as uh, certainly for Western students and and individuals need to have a better understanding, a better understanding of that cultural space in general, which I think is extremely limited. And I think that the films that are released in the United Kingdom are uh, extremely limited from a very small demographic of genres and films from, from those cultures. And so one of the key objectives of the society is to screen, arrange a programme of films which uh, um, a films which may not necessarily get a release or appeal to uh, um, to to students in general, but purely because I don't think that that the access to them at the moment in the United Kingdom is 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 a uh, is is particularly very good, to be honest. My position on how the my position on how the West views the East. Um, I think it's very limited. I think it's um, obviously we can 
we can throw in words like orientalist and such things but i think that in general it's just it's just limited i, I don't think that it's individuals problems it's not students problems or individuals it's the access to the material you know there's great films that 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 um are unavailable, will never see a release in the United Kingdom um, because of the dominance of the Hollywood system, you know. So I don't think that's the fault of an individual that they, they don't see the films or they don't, they're not even aware that they exist. That's, that's down to, you know, the institutions of power in the media. You know, they control what we get to see. Um, and again, so having some platform like the uh, Coventry East Asian Film Society which allows people to watch things and engage with things that they wouldn't get an opportunity uh, um, to do if they visited their local cinema, their local multiplex or going to HMV. Yes, yeah, so the, our sponsors of the Coventry East Asian mm -hmm. Film Society, mm -hmm. Terracotta and Third Windows, yeah. Um, how did you get them involved and what's your um, position on, on what they're doing? Um, to be honest, the, the, the way in which that developed was through uh, uh, terracotta films. Um, and I'd, I'd got a few films from, a couple of films from terracotta um, and I just liked from reading their kind of company ethos of what what their approach to releasing films. They were released some really unusual films. And so I, it was just a matter of, I emailed um, the, the company director and just explained to him what the project was what, that we were doing here at Coventry and asked um, if he was willing to uh, come and do a talk, talk about what his particular company, um, and it, and it, to, to be honest, it just developed from there. Is he was very impressed with the with the ethos and the the, the aims and objectives of the society, um, and so then he put put me in contact with Third Window with the with the uh, manager director Adam Terrell of Third Window, and it, it it just developed from there. And I think that the key to that. Uh, relationship has been linked with the films we show. I think the approach to what we're doing, with it being student-led, but with it having a very clear direction and mandate as well, which I think has always been essential to not show anything that we can consider, I suppose, obvious in any way, Battle Royale, Old Boy. It's no condemnation of those films at all. They're wonderful, fantastic films that have done a hell of a lot for the uh, Asian cinema in general. And it's in widening the, the awareness of people in, in the West. But that comes with a whole set of problems of, uh, of all films, therefore, have to follow that model to get a release, such as Tartan Asia Extreme. Um, and you've got two companies in Third Window and Terracotta who are actively fighting against that. They're actively trying to do something different. They're trying to pick smaller independent films um, that, that have a very unique cultural, I think, flavour to them. Um, and so I think that sat very well with what we were doing here. And so that relationship has been a very, very positive one, I think, for every, for hopefully for everybody involved. Or maybe Joey and Adam might think differently about that. But, but um, you know, I think it's, it's, it, it, it's been uh, um, a nice fit, to be honest. Well, I mean, they've been, they've been incredibly supportive. They've, um, Adam uh, Terrell, the managing director of, of, of third windows very kindly came up to the university and um, gave a talk about his uh, uh, company he also donated the entire back catalogue of, of third window films and more perhaps more importantly he uh, brought with him a film called uh, Kikira um, which has even to this day hasn't been released anywhere in the world yet and allowed us to watch it we screened that film and we did some feedback